line art. In Flash, it's more likely than you think. The difficulty being is that Flash uses vector rather than raster-based images. Vector is, well, uh, I, I guess you could say it's... It, you don't really need to worry about resolution when it comes to Flash, because everything can be resized. If you're doing very thin lines in Flash, you can kind of hide a lot of imperfections pretty easily. But if you're going for a chunkier art style where the lines are quite thick, the difficulty that you'll come across is that Flash doesn't seem to be very great at getting those nice tapering lines, those sharp edges. So there are tricks to getting your lines looking good in Flash that you might not know exist. Um, they're pretty simple methods, and I don't really think that it's hard to learn. It's just that it takes a lot of uh, extra care and quality control to make sure that your line art looks good. And you don't have to really focus on perfecting every single drawing to look perfect, but you know, if you have a part of a character's hair or a, a place where a sharp corner should probably be more pronounced, you probably want to focus the time and actually make sure that those lines look as good as they can. Now I'm going to show you here today a really, really simple method that it just takes a few, maybe adds a few more seconds, maybe a minute to each uh, drawing that you do, each line art in each frame that can just make things look a lot sharper. Generally speaking, if a uh, if it's an animated sequence and it's an in-between, that's probably gonna snap by really quick. You probably don't have to worry too much about making sure that things are perfect, but if you're gonna be holding a drawing for a considerable amount of time, you probably wanna be able to make sure that your line art looks relatively solid. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's jump in a flash. I'm just gonna, literally, I'm gonna have a green screen down here. Now this is the new cartoon that I've been putting together for the past two months. This is a limited animation uh, short about the social monsters, the monster girls, that uh, the characters that I have. Uh, and we have Slamantha and uh, the back of Vanity's head here. Now uh, the cleanup has been done by Ariazima and Chuchuru. And uh, I did I did some myself, but uh, I did notice that like. Um, not everybody cleans up the same way I do. And I wanted to kind of share this method because it's incredibly simple. Uh, I don't think it's it's hard to learn and I don't think it adds that much time to your pipeline, but I think that you'll find that it has pretty promising, nice results. So, uh, first of all, you're probably noticing that like not everything here is perfect. Like, I mean, for instance, like, you know, there's a little bit of spodgy, like spottiness around the hands and that's probably because I'm uh, particularly, uh, <laughs> picky about how hands are drawn, so I, I, I generally do a few uh, touch-ups and do-overs on hands, which I rush, so, you know, obviously I'm gonna let that slide, but for things like, you know, Samantha's, like, little hair, and hair parts, and oh, hair, goop, like, I want to have this kind of tapering and stuff, and obviously when you zoom in really close, you'll see the imperfections quite noticeably, but it's not too hard to, um, to get the lines looking sharp. Uh, there's one really important thing you need to know, and that depends on the version of Flash you're using, uh, earlier versions of Flash, the uh, brush size is actually um, relative to your zoom. So, uh, and I do apologize, the uh, the clicking here actually brings up the uh, the, the brush sizes, but uh, my capture software doesn't want to capture that. But I assure you that they're right here. So, generally speaking, when you want to select your brush size, you have to click like they've got a uh, let's see quite a, quite a few uh, just pre-baked sizes like you can't type in a number of like what size you want it to be and then you just pick you know you just do your stroke right in the older versions of flash if i zoomed in and drew again this would be the same size as this uh this wouldn't be the same size as this and that the this the percentage of the zoom actually matters so when if you're using if you're still using older versions of flash and not animate you need to keep in mind that whatever zoom you have so if you don't have context sensitive brush size to zoom in like in the new versions, you actually need to take note before you start. So it's like, if I'm gonna be doing cleanup at 200%, I need to take, make a, like a guide layer 
uh, up here, which you can just do by right clicking on a layer and hitting guide and it adds that little pin. And just make note, you go like, uh, okay, it was 200% uh, zoom with a three size brush or whatever, right? No, oh, it looks like I'm on paint inside. Uh, three size brush. Just keep that in mind. Otherwise, if you're in the newer versions like Animate, it's not a big deal because uh, everything will be uniform to that particular zoom. Now, here's the trick. Let's say you have a character who has a very sharp edge and you really want that. The difficulty being is that as you probably have seen, for those of you that do use flash, doing that doesn't always give you a very sharp corner. As you can see, it will generally come out really, really rounded. And that's kind of annoying. So if we want to get straight edges, that can be quite difficult. So the, the simplest way to do it, and this is just it in a nutshell, right? Is you just want to go past where you want to go. So I'm going to eventually get this right. There we go. Doesn't look right. I'm going to lean back so you can see it. Doesn't look right. It looks like the Smash Brothers logo. Okay, so what you want to do, hit V on your keyboard or hit the selection tool. Now, because it's vector, everything is built up of like little vertices, and you can grab them and actually pinch them. So if I take this corner here and pull, I can actually pull it through itself and then do it like that. And then you can delete these and boom, look how sharp that corner is in, comp in comparison. I mean, obviously there's this little weird discrepancy here, but when you're back here, look how much sharper that looks. And that really adds up overall in your drawing. So like if I'm doing like a piece of hair on a character and I really want it to look sharp, I can actually just be like, oh, okay, I'm going to draw it like this. And then I can go in. You don't even have to go in close if you don't want to. Pull it through. And then boom. Look how much sharper that is. And there's, it's, it's, it's not difficult to do. And then if you're tapering, you really want something at the top. And by tapering, I mean like it becoming like thin at the bottom or at the, at the end of the line. So you can actually just grab the line like this and do that. It's like so simple. It's such a simple trick. Now, sometimes there won't be enough vertices to actually get the, you know, not do this and delete the whole line. So what you can actually do is hold alt while you have the selection tool open and you can actually add vertice points. So I'm adding that one there. Boom. So just holding alt will allow you to add more vertice points. And this just makes things a lot sharper and you can kind of see where it is. You get better at noticing it. And then you can get little sharper lines like this. And, you know, if, if you really want to take your time with it, you can like start to align things a little better. And that's generally how I get the cleanest lines possible in Flash. Uh, it's, it's, it's a method that um, when I mentioned it to Ari Zima, uh, my friend Danny, uh, he pointed out that uh, it's actually something that they've been doing on uh, a few uh, animation productions as a recent. So this is, this is something that people know about. It's just not something that I see a lot of uh, younger animators doing and it really shows because uh, Flash cleanup is a difficult one because the issue with um, doing cleanup in Flash is that generally speaking, and I'll show you this as an example, when you're doing roughs, when you're working from a rough in Flash, uh, you'll generally find, and I'll see if, for, for example, um, okay, great, here's, here's a rough, okay? So the difficulty with Flash versus other programs is that when you're roughing something out in a program like uh, that's raster based, and by that I mean things like Clip Studio Paint, Photoshop, what, what, and whatnot, uh, every brush stroke you make, it it has like an opacity to it. it it's it, it can be more accentuated by how important that line is because it'll be more solid or uh, or more see through and clear if it's not important, if it, maybe it's like a little bit of construction like to build up the shapes. The difficulty with Flash is that everything is one solid color. And because of this, when you do a rough, people don't know which lines are accentuated to be important or are just stray lines that came from the, the, the sketching out process. So for example, this drawing here, I can tell you for a fact that the, the lines, uh, line here represents uh, the the wrist and then the the line here represents the overlap of the the this part of the the, the arm to the, the chunkier part of the arm 
uh, to kind of give it more depth, the wrist the wrist joint again. So when I pass this stuff off, I find that the uh, the roughs, important details like this that are minor but are intentional get assumed to be unintentional uh, stray lines. And that's the difficulty because if, if, if your rough is all one solid color, how are you supposed to know which parts of the rough to clean up and which parts not to clean up? So when I got this one back, uh, the, what, what I was more so looking at uh, was, and I'll give you an uh, example of what it was, um, it was, it was more of a, a, a kind of line that looked like this. Right? So these lines came back looking more so like this, and you know, then the hands just connected here, right? And then for this, of course, like that. When in truth, it was intentional, and uh, this is the, the fixed up version that I did, it was supposed to be like this. And this is nobody's fault. If you look at things like Clip Studio Paint, it's, it's a lot more apparent what is supposed to be uh, a rough and what is not supposed to be, uh, you know, cleaned up in the rough. And I'll give you guys a little example here. So this was a rough that I initially did in Flash, and uh, it was absolute garbage. It's so annoying to draw in, in uh, Animate Flash because, yeah, everything's one solid color. Uh, when I brought it into Clip Studio and then just went over it, I don't think I have the rough still, the end result was this. Obviously the mouth is on a separate layer, but you're able to do fine detail a lot better in something like this. And the, the brushes are so much nicer. And I'll give you a, a quick little look at what, uh, you know, that process looks like. So for instance, if I was rush, uh, let's, let's bring up a brush actually that would look like flash. So I'm going to use this brush. If I was roughing out in flash, you know, like obviously I'm going to be like, oh, you like everything's going to be one solid color, much like this. Now, if I'm using a brush that's more uh, dynamic with, and, and as well as doing size with pressure, it also does opacity, I'm able to kind of rough out things and be like, okay, this is the important line. This is the important line. You get what I'm saying? So stuff that's more so construction s clearly looks like construction, and that's the difficulty. I do find that I, the most of the mistakes I have to fix are just uh, mistranslations of the roughs. and. That does seem like one of the things that sets Flash behind and, or Animate behind a lot of other uh, up-and-coming animation software packages like Clip Studio, which I will get into in an upcoming video on how to animate and that. Uh, some of the shots from this new video I actually put together in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, the only downside about animating Clip Studio Paint currently is that there is no audio timeline scrubbing. When you have anim like a uh, audio clip in a video in flash if it's set as a stream uh which you do in the properties you can actually like scrub the timeline and hear like little tiny syllables of the noise and that lets you do more uh in sync animation lip sync and stuff and that's incredibly important when you want to do animation to uh like audio or music or whatever it be clip studio on the other hand currently doesn't have an the ability to scrub the timeline to listen to your your uh, waveform. This is an important feature of any animation software. Uh, I think they're probably going to add that in the in, in, in soon. I imagine. Uh, hopefully, I, I don't know for a fact. Um, but considering how frequently stuff like Clip Studio is updated, I could see that probably becoming a feature not too long from now, uh, as well as something called nested sim uh, nested animation, which basically means that like if I had a, a, a walk cycle that I animated and the guy's walking in place, like oh, da -da -da -da, I'm walking in place, right? Well, you can just, this, an this, this object would inside of it have all the frames of the character walking, and then you can go back to the main timeline and just kind of motion tween him along or, or key, uh, key him out so his feet, his feet plant at all the right times and then just kind of move it. You can't do that yet in Clip Studio. You can't have a nested animation loop inside of an object that you can move, which is something that they really need. And once those two things are added, I think you're going to see a lot of people leaving uh, Adobe Animate behind. And uh, maybe if someone from Adobe sees that, I think you need to improve your brush tools. They've been the same since forever. 
since Macromedia owned the pro the, the, pro the project. I mean, like, it's... It, it, they need to have people in to really talk about what needs to be fixed in this program. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing that I won't be sticking with Flash much longer. Um, and a lot of people will generally be like, hey, but isn't Flash becoming redundant soon? That that doesn't matter. They're, they're referring to things like the Flash player. Uh, that isn't the same as Animate, Adobe Animate, or Flash. That just means that the SWF format will be uh, phased out, which makes sense. It's ancient, you know? Uh, video players are kind of more the norm now in HTML5 and whatnot. Uh, but stuff like this, animating in Vector, is still fine you can you everybody nowadays exports it to video anyway so saying that flash is going to be redundant that's a misunderstanding about swf format on websites versus you know the program which is a completely different thing and i hear that a lot when i'm streaming on twitch people are like well why are you using flash when it's going to be redundant next year and it's they are completely different things in that sense that they're talking about the the swf format that's that's different Oh, this is a fantastic one. So this is a, this is a shot from the new cartoon uh, where they're talking about different types of content. And uh, this one was uh, talking about collaboration, which you'll probably see in the cartoon. The, the, the Slamantha and Vanity are cosplaying. Annie and Stalking, obviously. But you can also see here how uh, Arya Zima um, did exactly that. He has very sharp lines, and he used that method to get these sharp lines. And it really shows. And you don't, like I said, you don't have to do it with everything, but it, the more... If something like this, which this shot is literally pr practically just a still, it's it becomes very important to make sure that you emphasize the, the illustration looking nice if the lines are going to be this chunky. It really helps. It helps a ton. Very simple method. I hope you give it a try. And um, coming up, I will probably be showing you guys how to animate in Clip Studio Paint, so make sure you subscribe and click the bell i don't know what they say but hopefully that's correct um and uh yeah you'll catch wind of that and also this new cartoon which is coming out fairly soon uh so yes thank you for watching and good luck cleaning up your cartoons and uh getting them seen by the world okay um yeah that's it if you want to see more tutorials please subscribe to me on patreon or, if you want to know more, follow me on Twitch. Okay, bye! <laughs>